Hey guys, it's John Dean here, and in this video, we're actually going to look more in depth at the SEO matrix. We're going to go into Market Samurai and have a look at the SEO competition module um, for the keywords that we've been researching so far. So, without further ado, let's head on over to the presentation. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the SEO competition module and we're going to be looking more in depth at the five column headings in the SEO matrix. Now this is so we can assess the strength of our competition. Now I've already covered in a previous video about the volume of competition and about the strength of competition. And this, in this video, we're going to go further in depth into the, into the columns and what we're looking at and how to use the SEO matrix to see if your niche keywords that you've looked at so far your theme keywords actually meet the challenge criteria. So to start off with, our, our five column headings um, were page rank, backlinks to the page, whether the competitor is listed in the Yahoo directory, and whether the keyword is in the title of the page and in the URL. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at each of these in isolation and talk about them a bit more in depth. First of all is PageRank or PR. Now this is Google's measure, measure of authority and it's actually calculated constantly. It's calculated on a daily basis but we don't get to see it every single day. Google only publishes its PR updates maybe two or three times a year. However, PageRank, it goes from a scale of 0 up to 10. 0 being the lowest and 10 being the highest. So the higher you go up the scale, the more authority that that page has. Now you need to understand that PageRank isn't on a website it's on each individual page of the website. So you might have a website with 50 pages on it and one of those pages might be a PR4, one might be a PR3, one might be a PR1 and the rest might all be PR0s. Um, so it's not site-wide it's it's specific to each individual page and it's in each individual page that ranks in the search engines. Also, page rank is not linear. So what that means is a page rank one is not one time better than a page rank zero, and a page rank two is not two times better than a page rank zero, and so on. What it actually means is a page rank one is approximately about ten times more authoritative than a page rank zero. Whereas a page rank five page would be typically around 100,000 times more authoritative than a page rank zero. So the higher you get up the PR scale, the more authority you have in Google's eyes. The criteria for the challenge is that we, we want to be looking at sites which are uh, competitors which are less than a page rank of three. If the competition is higher than page rank three, then it means that you're competing against higher authority web pages. Um, so we want to be looking at P PR less than three for the challenge. The next item we need to look at is uh, backlinks to the page. Now, in the challenge, when you're running your SEO uh, competition, we, we're using a service through Market Samurai called Majestic SEO. Now, it's important you understand that no tool on the internet will tell you the exact number of backlinks pointing to a specific page. This is something that people tend to get, uh, they can't quite get their heads around it, but you, you've, got to, you've got to think there's, there's millions of backlinks being made each day and no tool can ever keep up with every single backlink that's being made. However, Majestic are one of the better ones and they, they've crawled literally trillions of backlinks on, on the internet. So that's why Market Samurai uses Majestic as a backlink source. And with the backlinks to the page, anything that you, you can see is red and yellow uh, tend to be higher numbers, and they're going to be more difficult to outrank than the ones which are green, which are typically the, the lower numbers. So again, for the purposes of the challenge, we're going to be looking at green squares. and always choose when you're doing your composition analysis always choose majestic seo and the historical index because this will give us the um, the widest range of backlinks that are pointing to the specific pages that we're looking at the next item that we need to look at is whether the competitor is in the yahoo directory 
Now the Yahoo directory, it actually, the reason it's in there is because uh, the search engines um, actually take this as a as a trust factor because quite frankly it costs money to get in there and each directory listing that's applied for is manually reviewed by a human being so as you can see here to actually submit your site to the Yahoo directory it costs at the time of shooting this video 299 US dollars which is non-refundable and that doesn't guarantee you entry into the Yahoo directory that's just the price of applying if your site then gets reviewed and they they deem it worthy they will put it in the directory and then you have to pay an annual fee of 299 US dollars to remain in the directory so the search engines see that as a, as a trust factor because they don't let anyone in. It's not a case of pay your money and they will let your site in. If, if the site does not meet their standards, it won't get in there. So for our criteria for the challenge, we're looking for competitors which have an N, a nice green square, in the Yahoo column. If they've got a Y and a, and a yellow or a red, then it's not for us. The next column that we're looking at is uh, the t keywords in the title of the page. Now a lot of people tend to think that the blog post title or the article title which you can see here is actually the title of the page but it's not. If you look at the top of your browser window you'll see at the top of uh, the tab it says learn to surf and then it says a beginners and the text is slightly cut off as you can see there. That is actually the title of the page. And if I've hovered my mouse over the tab and you can see a little yellow pop-up has come up which says Learn to Surf, A Beginner's Guide to Surfing. That is the full title of the page. So if our keywords are Beginner's Guide to Surfing then that will show up as a Y in the title column because the keywords are in the title of the page. Again, for the purposes of the challenge we're looking for a green square. It's nice and simple these criteria if it's a green square it's good to go. The next and final one is if the keyword is in the URL. If we have a look at the uh, this keyword of dog training you'll see we've got three different URLs here. There's freedogtraininginfo.com, dogobediencetrainingreview.com and a Wikipedia page on dog training. Now as you can see the keywords appear in different places. On the first one it's in the middle of the URL. In the second one the words dog and training are separated by a word obedience and a couple of dashes. And in the third one the keyword dog training is as a page after a forward slash so it's not actually in the domain. However each of these will appear as a, as a Y in the URL column because the keywords dog training are in the whole of the URL. Again for the purposes of the challenge we're just looking for a green square. So that's looking at the columns in isolation but what we're actually assessing in this session is whether our keywords meet the whole of the challenge criteria across each of the five columns. So if we take a look first of all at a keyword dog training we can see from this top 10 here in the SEO competition that there's a lot of red and there's a lot of yellow and there's a few greens now nowhere in in here is there a single green row and that's the criteria that you are looking for when you're reviewing your keywords you need a complete green row each of the five columns of PR BLP about links to the page Yahoo directory, keyword in title and keyword in URL need to be green. So as you can see here there is not one competitor there in the top 10 that has a complete green row. So this keyword will get discarded. You need to understand that what we're doing now is research so don't get emotionally attached to the keywords. Let the numbers guide you, let the tools that we're using help you inform and make your decisions and just take that decision. Dog training, looking at the stats here, looking at the figures here, there is no green row so we're going to move on and we're going to get rid of it. Second example I've got is a keyword surfing tips for beginners. 
Now this is looking a lot more promising, there's no red at all, there's only a few bits of yellow, but as we can see there are one, two, three, four competitors here in positions three, four, seven and ten that are all green rows. So this keyword would meet our challenge criteria. There's four potential positions in the top ten that we could attack and hopefully beat out. I have another example here, how to take a good portrait photograph. And again, there's a, a couple of bits of red, a couple of bits of yellow, but there's a lot of green. And again, we can see position three, position seven, position eight, nine, and 10 are all green rows. So we've got five potential uh, competitors that we could knock off their spot and take their position in the top 10. So the action step for you today is to assess the SEO matrix, go into the SEO competition module, have a look at the SEO matrix for each of your theme keywords. If you find one green row, then it's okay, it's good to move forward. If you find more than one, then that's fantastic. If there are no green rows, discard the keyword and move on. Don't ponder over it, don't say, oh, but it looks, even though it's, it's a red in the, in the BLP column, I, all the rest of it's green. If it's not all green, it's not good. So just discard it and move on. You have to be brutal about these things, we're just doing research. So don't get too emotionally involved. So that's your action step for today. Assess the keywords that you've been researching so far and find an all green row or more than one all green row.